The AI tech revolution is full steam ahead. Last year, AI text-to-image generation went from smudges all over your screen to actual beautiful coherent images like that. Text-to-image AI isn't without fault though, it's hard to control little fine-tuned details in your image. The classic solution in the AI text-to-image space has been in-painting, most famously on Dolly 2. And Dolly 2's in-painting is pretty good, you can erase that little section and it will regenerate that section. Of course, Dolly 2 is expensive, and the Dolly 2 generation in general really isn't that great, it's just the in-painting that's nice. Stable Diffusion has its own form of in-painting that people have used from time to time, and it's just not nearly as good as Dolly 2's in-painting. Perhaps in-painting was the last good thing Dolly 2 had left for it. Unfortunately for Dolly 2, that ends today, because Playground AI just released in-painting that is an absolute game-changer in the AI space. This in-painting is really darn good, and what's best is that you can try it out for completely free on Playground AI's website. Playground AI supports up to 1,000 generations per day for free on its website, and then over 60,000 per month if you sign up for their $15 plan, which is a pretty good deal. Not only this, Playground also has their own implementation of Pix2Pix, which is AI image editing from a text prompt, which I talked about in a video last week. In my opinion, the Pix2Pix implementation that Playground AI did is my favorite implementation of it so far. By the way guys, if you make anything cool, please share it on my Discord. A quick rundown of the Playground AI interface, you can choose between the different models here. They have Stable Diffusion 1.5, which is what I recommend everyone generate with because it supports their really, really cool custom filters. They also got 2.1 though and Dolly 2, and I wouldn't really bother with either of these to be honest. 1.5 is all you really need. And of course they have different aspect ratios and resolutions. I'll probably be sticking to 512 by 512. Prompt guidance, of course the higher this value is, the more it'll try to look like your prompt, but you might also start to deep fry your image if this value is too high. And of course the quality, so this is how long your image gets generated for. Anything between 25 and 50 steps usually is pretty good. And of course you can go up to four images generated per prompt. Down here on the left hand side, we've got your prompt and then we've also got negative prompts as well supported. So this is what we want to see, this is what we don't want to see, and of course this is the filters that I was talking about earlier. So these are a bunch of custom stable diffusion filters made by Playground AI. These are dream booth models and they work fantastic. If, for example, if we go pixel here, we'll just start off with pixel art shooting star 16 bit. You guys can see these dream booth models oftentimes produce some really cool stuff. If we generate this with no filter at all, there's a pretty wild difference in the quality of generation. This, in my opinion at least, is a lot better than this. And you guys can see there's also image to image supported. You can either draw or upload an image to use as inspiration for your final generation. Playground AI also supports creating variations of original images you generated, downloading them, editing them, and you can also do things like face restoration and upscaling. There's a lot of really nice tools with this, and a thousand generations per day for free is a good deal. But the main cherry on top of all of this is their fantastic new in-painting. They previously already had stable diffusion based in-painting, but it just isn't up to snuff with Dolly 2. We'll start out with a classic lemon prompt. 3D render lemon character relaxing on the beach sipping on lemonade. I'm gonna go ahead and do four images for this generation. And of course, with stable diffusion, none of these are particularly fantastic. Let's see if we can't find a filter that will better capture what we want to see. Let's go with Playtune and see how that does. And this is definitely closer to what we want. And there we've come across an image that we're pretty happy with, but it definitely still needs a lot of work and that's where editing is going to come in. So I'm going to go ahead and hover over this image and click on the edit button and this brings us to the editor. A quick tour around the editor here. This text prompt right here is where you will describe the changes you want to make to the image. This applies to both in painting and editing. They've also got negative prompts like we saw before. We've got the edit instruction strength. This is a very, very important slider here. You're going to be messing around with this slider, tweaking it about, trying to find the right strength here to complete your instruction that you've typed on the side. And of course, below that, we have the quality and details. Again, I just leave this around 25 to 50. And of course, then below that, you have your seed, but I leave that on random. So doing this edit instruction versus actually doing a mask, which would be like in painting here, that's the new feature, by the way, is clicking this Add Mask button. 
So we'll get to that, but first let's talk about instructions. Let's say I want this whole image to change in some sort of fundamental way that wouldn't suit in painting, like make it snowing outside or make their fireworks in the background. Let's try that. Make it night time and fireworks in the background. There's my edit instruction. You know, that would be hard to change with just doing in painting. So that's where this one comes in handy. Our edit strength will start out at 6.75, but we'll see if we need to raise or lower it based off of our first test run. That actually did a pretty darn good job. It kept the same character here and just added some nice fireworks in the background. It's It did great with uh, the value of 6.75. So that was actually really good. But let's say I crank this to like 16 or something. You'll see how much worse it gets with a too low or too high value. It's a very important slider. Yeah, like here. I mean, you can see some of the original image. There's definitely fireworks, but we've got a whole bird here now. And that's not exactly what we want. But if it's too low, you'll see it's bad in the opposite direction where we just get the same exact image here. There's no differences or changes made, but with the right value, the sweet spot of about 6.75, we get that perfect sweet spot generation. And of course, if I really like the fireworks, I could click on edit this image and then I'll be editing this one instead of this one, but we want to work with this one for now. So I like the fundamentals of this image, but there are a few things that need to be changed. So I'm going to click on the add mask and that brings us into the in painting here. Pretty simple controls here. We've got this little one, which is the erase. So I'll st I could start erasing things, for example. But if I wanted to heal everything I erased, I can click over onto this other button and start to fill in what I already erased. So that's sort of the controls. And of course, you've also got size to how big things can be. So if I want to erase them like really quickly, I can make the size of this really large. Okay, so there's a few things I want to change about this image. First of all, these creepy ears got to go. So I'm just going to slowly remove the ears here and I'll just type in lemon character here and click on generate and see if we can't just remove the ears essentially erase them mm, that didn't do it we're gonna do a little bit more here let's just do background and see if it's going to just replace that with background for us so we actually were able to remove his ears pretty easily here you just needed the right prompt I just typed in perfectly circular and it understood the assignment and got it done it made him perfectly circular we're gonna need to add a few things to this character to make him a little bit better but uh yeah that's how we did it here is we just did perfectly circular and now he's just a ball however that's good I want to continue on with this image so I'll click edit this image and now we're going to be using that one instead so he's still not the exact way that I want him We'll just use the edit instruction now and we'll say give him the texture of a lemon because he's too smooth. He looks like a bouncy ball. He needs to have the texture of a lemon. Oh, and this thing took it way too far. All right, he's full lemon. Tone it back. Tone the edit instruction strength down to seven. It was at 10. Oh, a little bit better, but still not there. We clearly need a lower instruction value. Let's try five. A little bit more lemony. Let's see if we can't do this with in painting. We'll add the mask now and just mask out this portion of this guy's face. That's the only portion that's going to be the texture of a lemon. And we're definitely getting a little bit of lemon texture on there. We'll increase the instruction value a little bit more and see if it gets a little bit closer. Okay, we're definitely starting to get that lemon texture. I'm going to tone it down a little bit. And with enough tweaking here, we actually ended up with something pretty good. He got a little bit of texture on his skin. He lost his mouth. That's okay. We can add a new one back in. But I like this edit, so I'm going to click on edit this image to continue what I'm creating. And you'll notice that we can actually be pretty loose with the in painting here. We can sort of just highlight around him and it understands that we're only trying to select this object. He's got these weird pink feet. I don't like them. We're going to need some new lemon feet. So we'll highlight just these feet again anthropomorphic lemon feet and legs let's see how it generates we'll do a seven instruction strength and see how that works to start off with definitely not strong enough all right we're getting feet that are way too human so we're going to do some remove from image prompts here there we go that's a little bit more like it i actually really like that all right i'm pretty happy with these feet that we've generated here so i'm going to go ahead and click on edit this image to continue this generation let's go ahead and add that smile back into this so as you can see we got the smile back in there it's a little bit ugly and cartoony looking but i'm okay with it for now all right so enough playing around with the lemon character let's see what we can do with like a real photo that we took ourselves so this is a photo i took of my dog Let's see if we can in paint a top hat for him to wear. I'll just sort of highlight all of this area above his head here. 
and said he is wearing a fancy top hat and you can sort of see the top hat uh, situated on top of his head there. Playing around with this edit instruction strength a little bit more might give us a better result. Ooh, that is a little too fancy there. That is pretty decent, I think. That's a nice top hat image. So let's go ahead and give him a fancy tie as well since he's already got the top hat. And that tie is definitely pretty fancy. In fact, it spells out an F, so we're going to reduce the edit instruction strength and try again. That's a little bit better for sure. It really doesn't know whether to give him a regular tie or a bow tie, so we'll just say bow tie. All right, we definitely got a nice bow tie in there, but we got two of them. And there we go. Now he's got a nice regular bow tie. And there we go. I'd say that's a pretty well edited image here. We've got the fancy top hat and the bow tie. Finally, we're doing a major edit here and we're going to say make it look like a movie scene. And there you go. It actually did a pretty good job of making it look like a movie scene. And we'll save changes here in the top corner. And now we're back to our original editor and we can go through and download the image, for example. So now we have the whole thing downloaded. It will reduce the resolution, though, of course, because we're still locked to those stable diffusion resolutions, 512 by 512 or, you know, 384 by 640 or 1024 by 1024. But I can go here to the actions and do an upscale and we'll see how the upscaling does on this image. And honestly, the upscaling is not too bad. It's not the best I've seen in the world, but it did the, the job all right. Definitely lost some of the original quality by taking it through the editor, but still, that's a problem that happens with every single one of these. Let's see if we can do face restoration on a dog. I don't know if that will work. Eh, it actually maybe helped just a little bit. Still kind of a fuzzy image. Either way, I'd say it's still pretty fun to mess around with, and you can clearly see that the editing capabilities truly are limitless. Again, taking a look through the basic playground advertised generations, you can see all of these could be changed or slightly modified. Like, let's take this Superman minion, for example. This S is all screwed up. You could continuously just in-paint until this S becomes perfect. You can fix and edit and tweak little details now, and it's very, very exciting because we really don't have many good options for tweaking and fixing little details yet, and this one's definitely a fantastic one. Viewers at home, please let me know what you think down in the comments below, and let me know if you're able to use this editor to make anything super cool. I'd love to see it on my Discord server. I haven't compared it directly with Dolly 2, but I have a hunch that it's kind of a back and forth game. Both models have their strengths and weaknesses at the end of the day, and obviously this one can't do out painting while Dolly's can, but Dolly's quality, in my opinion, has gotten worse over the time period that it's been released. I don't know if they changed some settings around or whatnot. There is definitely more capability, I think, at the end of the day with these stable diffusion models and with this new in painting. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.